In the workshop, fitting a mechanical lubricator to a Stuart 5A steam engine part 13. In this clip, I'm removing the reversing mechanism lock. And that's because I need to take off the steam chest cover as I'm going to drill a hole in the side of the steam chest. And I want to be able to blast away any swarf from the drilling process using an airline. But the other reason is this engine, for some inexplicable reason, is not running properly. And I can't figure out the valve timing. No matter how many times I change the position of the eccentrics, the valve timing continues to change. So by having a look at the valve, I think I have a good idea what's going on. And while I'm loosening the nuts around the steam chest cover, there are one or two things that I need to tell you. What I've been doing recently, apart from making a video almost every day, and putting the daily video on Patreon, I've also been uploading every day the older videos that the Patreon viewers have seen, which are approximately 40 behind the current ones. My handling of the public YouTube videos will change at the end of April 2019. I'll still be uploading some of the videos you've already seen if you're a Patreon supporter, but this will be down to about one video per week going public. And an increasing number of videos will not go public on YouTube, they will be for Patreon supporters only. So there you have it, this will happen at the end of April 2019. And I sincerely hope that the Patreon supporters increase, because it's getting to the point where I definitely need more Patreon supporters. In the time it took me to say all that, the nuts that hold the steam chest cover in place have now been removed. Let's have a look inside. And instantly I can see the problem, can you? The securing nuts for the slide valve have worked loose. These, by the way, are supposed to have lock nuts on them, but they don't. I'll make it so that these nuts do not work loose in the next episode. What I now have to do is drill a hole in the side of the steam chest and thread it quarter by 40 threads per inch. In this clip I'm using the very small steel rule that I bought to make sure the hole's in the middle. Here I'm using a centre punch to mark the position for the hole. I'm starting off by using a 3 16 of an inch diameter twist drill in the small Bosch electric drill that I have. Please note the camera angle makes it look like the drill is not going into the metal squarely, but it is. It's all an illusion. I placed a piece of rag over the bottom part of the engine to catch all the swarf from the drill. Once I drilled through with a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill, I then fitted a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill and drilled most of the way through using that. Once again, it looks like it's going at an angle, but it isn't, it is the camera angle. 7 seconds of an inch is the tapping size for quarter by 40. And I've changed the camera angle so you can see now, as I tap the hole quarter by 40 threads per inch, the tap is square to the work. I don't need to thread this hole all the way through, I'm just using a plug tap for a distance of about 3 eighths of an inch. That's more than enough to allow me to screw in the clack valve that needs to be fitted in here. A clack valve is also known as a check valve. And whatever it's known as, it's a one-way ball valve. Here's the one I'm going to use. This is one I've had in my box of small check valves for quite a while, made by Chris English of CME Engineering. This is Loctite 542 thread sealant, as it says on the bottle. And I've coated the threads in Loctite 542, and here I'm screwing the check valve into position, using a couple of shim washers to make sure it sits at the right angle. All I need to do now is connect the outlet from the pump to the inlet to the check valve. I've bent a piece of 1 8 of an inch diameter copper tubing to fit between the two valves. And in this part of the video, I'm in the outside part of the workshop and I'm about to silver solder a union cone onto the end of the pipe. Not forgetting, of course, to fit the union nuts onto the pipe first. Both of the nuts are on the pipe the correct way around, they're down at the right hand side at the bottom, but you can't see them in this clip. As usual, I'm using Silver Flow 55 silver solder wire and Easy Flow number 2 silver solder flux. Once the job is done and the pipe's been cleaned up, it's fitted to the engine and looks like this. I like copper piping to follow the contour of the engine because I think it looks good this way. It's quite important to plan out the positions for piping 
and not just have random piping at all angles all over the engine. That doesn't look good. But I think that doing it this way looks okay. Time to fill the mechanical lubricator with steam oil and test it. I haven't put the gasket in underneath it, but luckily it's not leaking. To make sure that it works, I'm turning it by hand using my Barco spanner. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it, but I can see a problem. I only noticed it when I was editing the video. If you look at the ratchet, you will see that it's not spinning true. This is easy to see when I speeded up the video. This is definitely not right, so I think I'll go up to Blackgates Engineering and buy a replacement mechanism. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.